The second episode of the series Pilgrimage to the Origins of the Sanctuaries of the Holy Land takes place at the Basilica of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives, the site of Jesus' agony. Brother Eugenio Aliata guides us to the place where archaeology confirms what tradition has transmitted from the biblical text. Pope Francis in Iraq between Baghdad, Ur, Mosul, Karakosh and Erbil the condemnation of all violence and sectarianism, the call for brotherhood and full citizenship of all Iraqis, the hope of local Christians after the historic journey of the pontiff. In spite of all the strict preventive measures taken, even the elderly of the Antonian Society of Bethlehem have been infected by the coronavirus. In the structure, staff and sisters Janeline work tirelessly to help the weakest. The Garden of Gethsemane is composed of eight centuries old olive trees located at the foot of the Mount of Olives. According to the evangelists Matthew and Mark, this is the place where Jesus was betrayed by Judas and arrested while praying with his disciples after the Last Supper. Today the term Gethsemane refers to three places guarded by the Franciscans that commemorate the agony and arrest of Jesus on the night he was betrayed. The Grotto of Gethsemane, the Garden of Olives and the Basilica of the Nations. Already at the end of the third century, Gethsemane was considered a place of prayer by Christians. With brother Eugenio Aliata, archaeologist of the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum, we will make a pilgrimage to the origins of this sanctuary. The Franciscans, together with the other pilgrims leading them, came to Gethsemane, and where did they stop? In a small garden containing ancient olive trees called the Olive Trees of the Romans. These olive trees belonged to Muslim owners in Jerusalem. They were merchants from Bosnia who bought the land in the 17th century and made a votive gift to the Christian religion and so the place was fenced with a wall and became exclusively a place of prayer. Later on, the custody wanted to enlarge this land with olive trees and bought an adjoining land in the southern direction. On this land, there were also some quite ancient olive trees that could be used as a place for prayer. But it was precisely in this place that the remains of the ancient churches came to light. During excavation work, a church from the time of the Crusaders came to light. Beautiful walls could be seen, and a stone was also identified that served as a memorial for pilgrims. The church is mentioned in the sources in the ancient stories of the pilgrims as the Church of Prayer because the focus of the church is on that prayer that Jesus made at Gethsemane. Father, if it is possible, pass from me this cup, but not my will, but your will be done. This is the center of the message of the place, the prayer of Jesus. The intention was to build a beautiful church, new, in place of the destroyed one from the time of the Crusaders, and several projects were made for this. And work began immediately, but while they were digging the foundations of this new church, beautiful coloured mosaics appeared, the remains of an even older church. So the decision was taken to rebuild the oldest church, which is of the Byzantine era, the 4th century, and is already mentioned by the famous pilgrim Egeria. These mosaics really give an idea of the elegance of this church. And as Brother Aliata points out, the modern mosaics were very well done and preserve the elegance of the ancient church to this day. The current basilica was built between 1922 and 1924. For its construction, several nations collaborated with large donations, 
which is why it is also called the Basilica of Nations. It was the architect Barluzzi who was given the task of designing the new church. The one who benefited from Barluzzi's work was brother Gaudenzio Orfali. Ecco, questa è la roccia centrale della basilica, e secondo l'usanza cristiana. This is the central rock of the basilica, and according to the Christian custom, in the center, in front of the altar, there is the most characteristic element, the most interesting for the history of the sanctuary. In this case, the most characteristic elements are the rocks. The rock that is in the center of the basilica is the one that attracts pilgrims who come to venerate it, not for itself, but for he who prayed on it. One mosaic depicts the betrayal of Judas, the rock of betrayal, while the mosaic on the other side depicts the scene of the capture of Jesus, who is taken by the soldiers again on a rock. So it's the rock of prayer, of betrayal, of Jesus' capture. On the roof, the brasses of the countries that collaborated in the construction of the basilica. From 2012 to November 2013, the basilica underwent a long renovation. The project Getsemane, preserving the past and forming the future, saw the restoration of the precious mosaics. In 2020, during the construction of a connecting tunnel between the Basilica of Agony and the Cedron Valley, we were confronted with a surprise. A mikveh, a Jewish ritual bath from 2000 years ago. The archaeological excavations carried out by the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum of Jerusalem and the Israeli Authority for Antiquities have also brought to light a Byzantine church, the medieval remains of a monastery or reception house for pilgrims together with some cisterns for water collection. Archaeology in this case is a confirmation of what tradition has transmitted from the biblical text. And when we have these three elements, biblical text, tradition and archaeology, we can say that we have elements of sufficient certainty to identify the place. The olive trees of Getsemane were also subjected to analysis by experts in biology and plant physiology from Italian universities and the National Research Council at the request of the custody of the Holy Land. The studies showed that their logs and branches are about 900 years old, making them among the oldest known olive trees. But that's not all. The olive trees belong to a single original variety and they also again. The olive trees belong to a single original variety and they also all have the same DNA, which means they were propagated by cuttings from a mother plant. Exceptional pilgrims to the Holy Land have also been the pontiffs who have venerated the stone of agony of Jesus, but also planted an olive tree in the sacred garden, as did Pope Paul VI on a pilgrimage in 1964 and Pope Francis in 2014. For every Christian, these olive trees are a living reference to the passion of Christ. In this pellegrinaggio 2021, on this 2021 Lenten pilgrimage, kissing the rock of the Lord's agony, we ask for life and reconciliation for all, especially in this time of pandemic where people are suffering. It was from this place that the procession to the Basilica, the destination of the second pilgrimage of Lent, began. The Mass was presided over by Brother Donaciano Paredes Rivera and concelebrated by the Friars of the Custody together with priests from other religious congregations. The focus is on Jesus' prayer before his arrest. After recalling another moment of dialogue with the Father on the occasion of the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor, it is the moment of another revelation. Father Lukas Popko explains in his homily, not in the light, but in the night, an episode that reveals that Jesus' communion with the Father is even deeper. All our prayers and liturgies are reduced to this, Thy will be done, that is, I place myself in Thy hands, Father Popko then remarked, 
recalling the words spoken by Jesus on the agony stone. But what we observe here, he concluded, is not Jesus' solitude, it is his communion with the Father. Iraq, Iraq will always remain with me, in my heart. A memory to preserve, a memory to start from. The painful memory of war, terrorism, persecution and escape, but also the one on which today we are trying to rebuild thanks to hope, strengthened by a visit destined to remain in history. Baghdad, Ur, Mosul, Karakosh, Erbil. Before Pope Francis, the first pontiff to visit Iraq, the ruins of cities destroyed by the violence of decades of war and the fury of the Islamic State, and above all the faces, the stories of Christians present in this land for 2,000 years. Nel 2014, quando l'ISIS l'hanno attaccato in ora di Nineveh, è stato... In 2014, when ISIS attacked the Nineveh plain, it was difficult to leave our land and live dispersed. Today so many families have migrated, and this is a difficult thing to accept. What we live today can never be forgotten. Accettare questo momento che abbiamo visto oggi è davvero... In the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Karakosh Bagdeda in Aramaic, there were also Brother Nur Tamas and Brother Haitham Haldahano, Franciscans of the custody of the Holy Land. They returned for the occasion to their hometown in the heart of the plain of Nineveh, where they accompanied the joyful expectation of the Pope. A historic day for Iraq and also for Vatican City has come to an end, a dream that had been in the minds of so many people and in the heart of the Holy Father for so long. Already on the day he landed in the capital, Baghdad, in his meeting with Iraqi authorities, Pope Francis had explained that the religious, cultural and ethnic diversity that has characterized Iraqi society for millennia is a valuable resource to draw on not an obstacle to be eliminated. The visit to Mosul, in front of the square overlooked by the ruined churches of the city, is an opportunity to strongly express the condemnation of all violence. Today, in spite of everything, we reaffirm our belief that fraternity is stronger than fratricide, and that hope is stronger than death, and that peace is stronger than war. The interreligious prayer in Ur, in front of the House of Abraham, patriarch of the three monotheistic religions, recalls the theme of brotherhood. This also dominates the meeting with Ali al-Husayni al-Sistani, the highest Iraqi Shiite authority, two years after the one with the Sunni leader Ahmad al-Tayyib in Abu Dhabi. A rich, complex and risky program in a country where first the local church and then the Pope have reiterated their condemnation of sectarianism and the need for Christians to be granted full citizenship for a peaceful future. Salam, salam, salam. Shukran. Dio benedica tutti. Dio benedica l'Iraq. Allah mahakum. I am very sad. The sisters always stayed with us and helped us daily. Now they are infected with COVID-19. I ask God to grant them healing and I wish peace and well to all because we are very tired. With the spread of the pandemic in the Governorate of Bethlehem and despite all the precautionary measures taken during this year by the Antonian Society to protect the elderly, Sister Catherine Tashman of the Congregation of the Daughters of Mary, Most Holy of the Garden, did not survive the infection. A wonderful example of generosity in the service of the poorest of the poor, she carried out her humanitarian mission with sacrifice, patience and loyalty. We 
احنا عملنا حالة طوارئ واغلقنا بيت المسنين. We declared a state of emergency and closed the house to visitors. The entrance was only for emergency cases and the situation seemed to be quite good. We found the first case of the new variant among the elderly and in a few days it spread. Today we have 12 employees and 15 elderly infected. There are three serious cases and there is no place for them in hospitals. Here we give them the necessary oxygen and medicine and the doctor comes twice a day to check on them. هلا نحن عمالنا بنعطيهم الاكسجين هون الادويه اللازمه لهم بيجي دكتور كل يوم عندهم الصبح وفي الليل انا ممرضه ممرضه جرياتريك للمسنين الفتره هذه انصابوا During this time the staff and nurses were also infected I'm a nurse and in addition to my job I volunteered in the kitchen to help prepare food for the elderly We need to support them and I hope they all get well soon نشتغلوا اطباخ عشان نطعميهم لانه فيش حدا اللي يطعميهم ويدير باله عليهم والله يشفي الجميع The Pro Terra Sancta Association has always supported the Antonian Society so that it could be a home for the poor elderly but also for families in need. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Pro Terra Sancta has renovated 15 rooms, providing them with the necessary medical equipment such as oxygen machines. Some of these machines have also served nearly 40 families outside the Antonian Society. Con questa nuova ondata di virus la società antoniana si è trovata in grave difficoltà perché molte non solo gli anziani ma molte di With this new wave the Antonian society found itself in great difficulty because not only the elderly but also the employees and the sisters were affected by the virus and this created a great need. We don't do our work because it's a project but because it's a vocation and when there was a need to help we didn't think twice about it. It's kind of like our home, the place where we take care of the poorest people in Bethlehem. Putting ourselves at the service could only be a normal thing in this time of need. This new variant of COVID-19 has hit the city of Bethlehem. The coronavirus has managed to overcome the strict preventive measures and infect the most fragile age group right inside the home for the elderly of the Antonian Society. Operators, volunteers and the Janeline nuns are trying to resist silently and courageously, unfortunately sometimes even at the cost of their lives. In this time of global suffering, the Holy Land has also been affected. With the lack of pilgrims to its shrines, with the lack of jobs to local Christians. The custody of the Holy Land is present with 300 friars in Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Cyprus and Rhodes. It has always been close to the populations affected by wars, epidemics and pandemics. The Pro Terra Sancta collection is the main source of sustenance for the life that takes place around the holy places. While waiting for the return of the pilgrims, the custody asks for your help. Next Good Friday, make your offering. <laughs>